list here. Um, so on a scale of one to 10, how clear are you on what is yours and what is everybody else's? So if you just let me know in the, the comments or the chat, I would love to know where are you on that scale? And so do you always know what's yours or not? Do you sometimes, is it just really super mixed up? Um, love to hear what that is for you. Four, we have, Stacy says four, it's a four for her. Okay, awesome. Um, and five, Cameron says five, so half and half. M says, at the moment, my situation is not so much in my your control. Right. Situations being what they are, not in your control. But whose feelings you're feeling may be, right? Are you feeling your own feelings? Are you feeling everybody else's feelings and overwhelmed, whelmed by and um, confused by everybody else's feelings? And let me just, I don't think I need this. I thought I would need this page on, but I'll just pop that off so people aren't messaging me doing our call. Um, okay, so uh, then, so there's there's a there's a mixed bag, right? Of of what's ours and what's not. Um, so, what happens when we don't know what is our stuff, right? It gets very confusing, right? Part of the empath challenge is that we're on a perpetual roller coaster. We feel maybe things too differently, too, uh, too deeply, excuse me. We get confused about what's ours and what's ours, not ours. It leads to exhaustion and overwhelm. Um, let me just see actually if I can, um, I just, I'm, I have some slides here that I prepared, um, but they're just, let me see if I can share my screen here. So. We're gonna just share them in this in this segment um, as I have them here. So you'll see a little behind the scenes. Um, this is the best way I can do it for now. Um, so you can't feel it tells who's is whose. You get really confused. Um, we also, also tend to self-sacrifice in people, please. Is that something that you do? Are you familiar with that? Um, maybe you wonder if you're crazy. Uh, raise your hand, give me a thumbs up if you've ever wondered if you're crazy because you feel things that maybe um, not everybody else does. Um, and so, oops, what does happen? Uh, so this is part of the challenge of being empathic, right? Is we're really mixed up, um, mixed up, anxiety, stress. We're really mixed up on what all this is. Um, so part of my story is that I struggled for a really long time being able to tell what was mine and what's not. First of all, I didn't even know that I was empathic. Uh, I just thought that I was crazy. I struggled with um, often suicidal level depression that I felt like I couldn't overcome. Often really heavy feelings. I used to describe it like I felt like there was a rain cloud over my head and it just followed me around wherever I went and no matter what I did and I couldn't make it go away. Um, and so, it wasn't until I started to understand how to work with being empathic and, and particularly how to tell the difference between what was mine and what was not that things started to really shift for me. And I got to a place of feeling much more happy, much better in my life. So tonight we're going to dive into particularly, um, and Stacey says, I can so relate. Kathy Ann says, me too. We're going to really dive in more deeply to this sorting out the difference between what is yours and what is not. And Stacey and Kathy Ann, if you're able to join us on Zoom, it'd be awesome to have you here and love that you're turning in on Facebook as well. Um, so it took me a lot of years to sort out and, and to learn how to work with um, being empathic in a way that felt empowered, that didn't leave me feeling crazy, that helped me get out of feeling depressed. Um, so what people think empath empowerment is, often things that come up are shielding and grounding, blocking other people's negative energy, maybe meditation, wearing crystals and saging for protection, being able to stop feeling so much, shutting out other people and their energy, um, 
maybe some simple tools that stop the overwhelm. Now, these are all great tools for different aspects of being empathic, but it, to me, it wasn't at the heart of the thing that really created change for me. These were all just little simple strategies that sort of treated the symptoms, but didn't get to the root issues and the root cause. So, um, whoops, let me go back. So what empath empowerment really is and what it really looks like is, um, sorry, my, my mouse is a little touchy today. Okay, so to me, what the true empath empowerment work is that will create lasting change for the rest of your life. It's about repatterning the way you function and relate to your life and to other people. So some really deep work here, learning to inhabit your own life and master your own energy. Uh, part of what happens with being an empathic is you absorb other people's energy. We get messy with our own energy. We get all mixed up. There's also an element, almost every so raise your hand or give me a comment, um, a yes comment, if this is true for me. Um, how many of you have experienced some form of trauma throughout your life, either in childhood or later on? Because um, I've talked to probably hundreds of empaths at this point, and almost every single empath that I talk to that struggles with being empathic has a history of trauma. And so healing your trauma and sorting out your trauma is going to really, really help your empath abilities and understanding your empath abilities is really going to help you heal your trauma. Um, this, is, this has been huge. They go together. The more, the better you get at understanding being empathic, the easier it is to heal and resolve some of your trauma issues. The more you work on your trauma issues, the easier it is to deal with being empathic. Um, it, it's not about feeling less, but really more deeply and more clearly um, when you really understand. So we have, we have several people saying um, childhood trauma, PTSD, abandonment issues. Yep. All of those, all of those fit in, right? That all um, contributes to being empathic. And if you haven't noticed, I talk with my hand. So um, forgive me on that one. Um, and oh, you can see my phone is off in the corner here because I'm multitasking. Um, and then so knowing yourself and your truth with crystal clarity, when you really get to know what is yours and what is not, and you get really super clear about it, everything gets so much easier. It's not that you don't feel other people's energy or know what's showing up um, or have those kinds of empath experiences. But when you have that clarity, you know what's yours, you know what's not, you know what to do with it, how to start, sort it out. Um, it being empathic is, is, is stretching and challenging. It's, you probably all know it can be a challenging journey and may require you to step into your truth and power and in, in a bigger way. Enjoy. Hi, it's really nice to see you. I'm so glad you joined us. Um, but it is, it is this act of really growing and stretching and sometimes requires you to like Step the F up, as me and my friends used to joke. Are you going to pretend to be pathetic? Or are you going to step up into the power that you have, the ability that you have to read energy, to work with energy, to perceive what's going on around you? Or are you going to let yourself be at the effect of it? Um, it's an inter initiation into your truth, empathic powers. And initiations aren't always easy. And Kathy, as, as, at 12 years of age, I knew I was different. Yeah, I felt different all my life as well. Um, so um, I think, um, oh, I missed the meme. Oh, no, here it is. So I love this meme. What people think spiritual awakening is like for versus what it's actually like, right? So what coming into your empath power is like versus what people think it's actually like, you know, meditative bliss, or I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy, like what the bleep is going on, I feel like I'm losing my mind, and I don't know what's going on, that's like part of the journey, and then as you work through that, and rise up through that, you can get to the place where it is, you know, the top picture, a little more sense of bliss, and ease, and joy, but in the mix of it, it can be quite challenging. And it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's not because 
you messed up. It's not because you're effed up. It's because you're sorting out a whole bunch of stuff that you haven't learned how to work with. And um, that isn't the common experience of everybody else in the world. Um, and Stephanie says, I did not acknowledge my gifts for a number of years, right? You can choose to ignore it, acknowledge it, make it go away or want it to go away. Likely that's going to twist you up and not really support you. Um, and then when you step into it, you can have more power. So um, to me, the three empath essentials, and we're going to talk about the first one tonight, in, to getting to a true empowerment is to know the difference between what's yours and what is not. So you're not all mixed up in everybody else's stuff. Know what to do with what is not yours, right? So it's one thing to, to know, hey, this is not mine, but then you're still feeling it and you're still stuck with it and you have no idea what, what to do with it. And then the third is to get to the point where you stop absorbing everybody else's stuff so much and you can really step into um, just navigating in a different way that, so it doesn't stick to you, it doesn't overwhelm you, doesn't get into you. Um, so we're gonna start with number one tonight. This class is really designed around getting deeper into telling the difference between what is yours and what is not and really stepping into um, you, being you, having you clearing out everything that's not you, living from your essence rather than mixed up with everybody else. Um, so the good news is you're not doomed to being negatively affected by everyone else for the rest of your life. You can learn how to discern the difference and then not absorb or take on that other people's energy. And you're not a helpless victim to other people's pain, energy, or negativity. Being an empowered empath means that you get to be greater than all that and you get to use that information to your advantage. Um, and let me just let me just check on um, your comments here. My personal issue is rejection. Yep, that's a big one. Um, so many signs in my house, lights flashing, things moving, radio volunteering, changing by itself, cat watching things. Then I had a kind of awakening where I felt so amazing, po amazingly positive, right? Um, sense of um, severe negativity after that. Yeah, makes sense. I, I get all of that, right? Um, and so, oh, we asked this question already, but I'm going to ask it again because my slides, I got clear this out. How clear are you on what is yours and what is not? Um, and I'm just going to tell you right now that probably a lot more of what you experience than what you think is not yours. You might say, oh, I know what's mine and what's not. And there's probably a whole bunch of stuff that you've identified as yours and think that's yours that actually wasn't, it isn't really yours, but you've mixed it up. You've thought it's yours, yours taken on. I can't tell you a few different times. I'll be like, okay, this time it must really be my issue. This must really be my thing. I'm crying. And I use some of the tools to identify and to separate out what's mine and what's not. And it's like, poof, that energy goes away. I'm like, oh, I was convinced this was mine, but this really isn't mine either. And the more I do this work and the more I work with other clients, the more I really see how much we absorb and then think as ours that actually isn't. Um, so Stephanie says she absorbs so much as an empath. When I'm shopping, I get headaches and I need to go home and lay down. Um, right, um, we're not gonna talk um, for an hour. So, um, I'm just, we're not gonna talk too much this time about why we absorb other people's energy. I did do another class on that and I'll do another class in the future. Um, so part of it is, so there's knowing what's yours and what's not and then figuring out what to do with it and figuring out not how to not take on so many of other people's stuff. So like the going shopping and pulling in everybody else's energy and being drained by it. There are levels and layers that you can look at to understand why that's happening for you, and then how to manage and navigate your own energy differently so that doesn't have to be your experience anymore. But that's like step three, and we're on step one, which is, is it even yours? So we're going to talk about that. 
So what are your telltale signs that something is not yours? And here's a couple that I've put up, but I'd love to hear in the comments and chats, or even if somebody wants to come on and just share. Um, oops, I got my slide got a little mixed up here, we see. Let's just go like this. Um, so what are some of these ones that really feel like, um, Look at that, I'm doing it in the edit version so I can just move it around, that is super fun. Um, so no justifiable reason. Um, maybe your mood changes with who you're with, right? So I'm around a certain person, all of a sudden I feel a anxious or angry or when I am feeling like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening, I'm feeling really weird. I just don't feel like myself. Out of, out of a blue feeling, sudden dark moods or thoughts. Like I'm sitting at my desk working on my computer and all of a sudden I'm like, my life sucks. I don't want to live anymore. It's horrible. I'm like, wait a minute. How is this fine five minutes ago? What the heck is going on? This is totally not me. Um, you also might find that you're mirroring the feelings of those around you and, and absorbing feelings of those around you. Um, so, um, yeah, just love to hear what are your telltale signs? How do you know um, a mystic gray feeling, to be honest, says one of our Zoom participants. Oh, I think that's M. Um, like, so how do you know what those things are that um, really mix you up? What are your telltale signs? Because the more you can identify and notice the tell telltale signs, the more you can use those as ways to know what's yours and what's not, and then also to switch out of it and get out of it. So, um, you know, I know enough now that when certain things show up, I'm like, oh yeah, this is not me. I don't have to get on this ride of this stuff. I can like step back a little bit, not get caught up in the content of it and then do the works to separate myself from it. Um, so I'm curious, what other telltale signs do you have? Um, let me just... Oh, so this is um, so being on the phone with someone and then feeling anxious or angry, like getting hit by something. Yes, hit, hit, punch in the gut. Um, so that that sudden feeling. Another thing that someone was saying in the group is like that feeling that uh, that you have a no justifiable justifiable reason or explanation for why you're feeling this way. Like, why am I feeling this way? I shouldn't be feeling this way. Like what? Like everything's good in my life and I feel this weird feeling. That could be a sign that something is not yours. Um, what else? Uh, anything else? So just take note of that and start to pay attention as you go through your own life. What do you notice? that maybe gives you pause or helps you identify the difference between what is yours and what is not. Because the more that you can pick that out, the more you can say like, oh, this is that experience. What is happening right now means I'm probably not in my own energy. Overwhelmed, too much energy, yep, okay. So those are really good signs. So just start to take note, what are your signs? What are the clues that you can look for in your life that tell you you're no longer connected to yourself and your own energy? There's something showing up for you. Um, get that sinking feeling that you know something's not right. So start to pay attention. What are those signs for you? And maybe you'll get more and more of them that identify like, okay, not mine, someone else's. Um, so let me talk a minute for the about the primary and secondary empath impacts. So this is something that I discovered, and maybe if you've been following me for a while, you've heard me talk about. But um, it's a way that being affected by other people's energy then 
affects our whole world and makes it really confusing, honestly, to tell if something's ours or not, or not, because it feels a lot like ours. So here's my little formula. Awareness of energy. So some strange energy shows up in your space, somebody else's energy, something comes up, you react to that energy and you take it for a wild ride. So let me, let me give you a particular example. So I feel somebody else's weird energy. It stirs up something in me, reacts something in me. And then all of a sudden I'm off and running with all of the problems that I think I have in my life. So for me, and I have my standard one. So it's, it can be money. I'm not I haven't achieved enough in my life. Nobody likes me. I'm, I'm just a pathetic person. Uh, my life is going nowhere. Um, and it's like this energy hits. And then I get on this, this, this ride. And I go for this ride of thinking about all the problems that I have in my life. Um, and the way that this really hit me was like, wait a minute. I know I've just been around some weird energy. Now I think I have all these problems. I'm trying to like sort out all these problems. What if I deal with the energy, whatever that energy is that was affecting me first, and then let's see if I still think I have all these other problems. So when you get hit by somebody else's energy, and then it like takes you on a ride of your own stuff, right? It takes you on a ride of your own stuff. Because like, I have felt like I don't belong here. I have felt like I struggle with money. All of these things that are very familiar issues to me feel really like they're mine, right? And in, to some degree they are, but what has activated them is something else, something outside of me, somebody else's energy. And so what I've learned is clear out the energy that's not mine first, and then see if I still have the problem. And so, and I have a whole bunch of tools that I teach that help you get back to, are you yourself in the here and now, or are you someone else? Are you mixed up with somebody else's energy? And I pretty much guarantee you that if you deal with the first thing first, which is the primary impact, right? The primary impact is somebody else's energy showed up in your world. The secondary impact is all the problems that you think of you have. If you deal with like the weird energy that has entered your space, then all the problems that you thought you had go away and you're like, oh, I'm fine. So that's, that is what you want to learn is to recognize when you've been impacted by some energy to not take it for a ride and then just clear that energy back out so you can come back to really being yourself in the present moment and well, so many of the problems that you think you had go away. Um, is that making sense to people? Are there any questions about that? Um, I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, my life is falling apart. This, that. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I myself in the here and now? Whose energy is this? What's really going on? Clear it out. I'm like, oh, nothing in my actual life changed. And yet my whole feeling about it changed. If that makes sense. So um, give me some feedback. Did, are, you, are you following along on that? Can you see where that might be relating in your own life, where that might happen for you? Um, so let's talk about what is not being able to tell, the, tell what is yours and what is not costing you. So what are some of the impacts and the effects of getting mixed up in everybody else's energy to yourself in your life? And I, let, I purposely left this blank because I really wanted to hear from you. Like, what are, how does that impact you? So, <laughs> I'm shutting my mouth to, to let you respond. When you, anyone? Up oh, here's a, a, a chat comment. It impacts your health, right? It makes you confused. I cry, so you cry a lot. Depression, you feel depression and anxiety. Uh, to, for me, I created a lot of conflict in my relationships. 
and a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion, self doubt, lack of confidence, emotional roller coaster. Also, a cost that it had to me was spending years of my life trying to figure out what was wrong with me and why I had all these problems that I didn't actually even have. You know, whether it was going to therapy or personal development, all this kind of stuff, the truth was I was just really sensitive to everybody else and everybody else's energy. And not knowing that, I've spent so much effort and so much energy trying to sort all the all this stuff. That wasn't mine in the first place. It exhausted me. It drained me. It made it hard to leave the house, um, to be social, all those kinds of things. So just start to, to look at that. Like, what are some of the ways that this costs you in your own life to not have that clarity about what is yours and what's not and to be mixed up in this realm? Um, cost me like my confidence and my ability to really move in the direction that I wanted to move in my own life. There was a question actually um, that came up when I was talking to people about this class beforehand was like, um, and I think we're all ladies on this call. Um, so one of the interesting things was, okay, so you get in, there are men in your life who are attracted to you or interested in you. And then you start picking up on their feelings about you. And then you're sort of giving that feeling back. And there's a confusion about what is what you're feeling, your genuine feeling for that other person? Or are you feeling their feelings for you that, that you're then responding to? I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but this has been true for me. I have to stop and wait and say, wait, Am I just receiving this other person's attraction toward me and feeling toward me, and then I'm just responding to it? Or is this my genuine feeling inside of my self? Um, and, and so it can be very confusing for me, especially in those intimate relationships, right? You're like, you don't know who's is who's. Um, clinging, and we have a comment about clinging to a narcissist also, right? Vicious cycle. Yep, all, all mixed up in that. Yeah, contradiction in what is said and how I feel, right? It can, a lot of confusion. When you get to really know the difference between these two, so much clarity can be had, right? You can tell like what you're picking up on that's other people's. You can read into other people's energy in a deep way. I mean, to me, it's, it's provided me with a huge, um, hugely greater degree of happiness, peace, and joy in my life to be able to really separate out me from everybody else and then really know what it's like to be me. Um, it's interesting because I'm feeling some of y'all's energy on this call and there's a whole bunch of different energy going on here. And um, so that's another thing. Like I'm being aware of all of the sensations in my body are giving me information about all of the energy that all of you are bringing to and contributing to this call. And um, we'll do a little bit, of, we'll do some clearing in a little bit. Um, so let's, um, so I'm curious also, what have you already tried to work through this to tell, one, to tell the difference between what is yours and what is not, and two, to separate your own and your energy out so that you can just have you. So, so complicated. No one understands. Want to give up and hide. Um, yes, Kathy Ann, I understand that. Um, I would say nobody understood stood until now because I think I do understand. Um, we can have a conversation if you like to go a little bit deeper, but I know that feeling like nobody gets it. It's yeah, I get it. You're not alone. Um, and I know how, how it can feel like nobody understands and nobody gets it. Um, so yeah, just tell me a little bit. Um, so moving, um, so, so Emma says, I haven't been around many people recently, but I've had to move away from my mom, constant negative energy, right? So uh, isolation is a common, um, thing that um that empaths will try right because they can't deal anymore so they isolate um right absorbing the negativity um it's like some people don't even want to leave the house anymore they just want to 
Somebody here said they'd rather just be around animals. Um, and so it, it can make your life very small if you don't know how to navigate it um, because it's too much. So I'm just going to be by myself in nature and I'm going to have my peace that way. But the truth is you can learn how to work with it different ways so that you can have peace even in the face of everybody else. Um, have my cat. Yep. So animals can be a, a comfort. Anything else? Has anybody else tried anything else? Therapy, right? I went to therapy. I'm trying to figure out what was going on for me. And this is before I knew I was empathic. So I didn't even know that I wasn't having my own feelings. And that didn't really work that well for me. Um, so all of those pieces, right? Um, stones help. So, yep, that can be stones, grounding. So, to me, like things like stones, grounding, saging, et cetera, are tools that treat the symptoms, which sometimes we need, but they don't necessarily affect and address the underlying cause of why we're having those experiences in the first place. And um, if we can really get to what, what is really going on and why we're picking up on everybody else's or energy, all that kind of stuff, then it can become easier to navigate and we don't need so much help, support, protection, all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, um, morning mindset, meditation, gratitude, and got to a great place. Yep, those are great tools as well. Um, and so let's, let's keep going here. Um, Finding you. So here we, here we go. We're going to do some clearing because I feel a lot of energy coming up from all of you that we we're going to clear some energy around this. So part of getting clear in what is yours is not, not is finding you. Like, who are you really? And clearing out everything you've misidentified and misapplied as you that isn't. Many of us, being empaths our whole lives, have absorbed a lot of stuff throughout our lifetimes that is bogging us down and keeping us heavy and that is not ours. And sometimes you need to do what I consider like a deep house cleaning, a deep clearing out to get to, look at, I'm moving my hands, I'm moving energy, get into that place where you really are connected with your own self, not mixed up with everybody else's energy. So, um, I'm wondering if I have a volunteer who would like to do, to be the person to get some clearing on this call. And we can do it if you're on Facebook Live, we can do it that way. Or if you're on Zoom, I can bring you on on Zoom. So is there, um, is there anybody who would like to pop on here and get some, some energetic clearing? Um, with us, and I'm just looking at Kathy Ann's comment here. Okay, so this is, I think that's you, Em. Um, let me just see if I can get this comment to sometimes Facebook. Okay. Um, okay, so Kathy said, I'm talking about turning it into magic. Um, um, no judgment on how you look. Um, it would be nice to see your face um, if you're willing. Um, if not, we can just do voice. I'm going to stop my screen share for a moment so that I can uh, I can see you. So hey, Em. So Em is joining us. I think in the middle of the night from uh, England, I believe. Um, yeah, it's um, 1:38 a.m. at the moment here. Okay. Props to you for showing up and being willing. <laughs> to be here for, um, for your transformation, for your healing, for whatever wants to show up tonight and for stepping up to this call. So, um, so what we're gonna do right now is some of the deeper healing, shifting energy work and clearing work. It's sort of like what I think of as the deep house cleaning, really cleaning out some of the baggage that you've, has been holding you back and, and holding you down and getting you all mixed up with everybody else's energy so that you can start to be a little more free and, and, and learn some tools to really come back to being yourself in the here and now. So 
The first thing, I, I'm waving my hands already because I feel some energy. This is one of the things I do when there's like a lot of energy going on. I'm so, just thinking, I'm like, God, look at my face. Look at me. I've got my pink dressing gown on. It's this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, appreciate you and all of your vulnerability um, in the way that you're showing up. Thank you so much for being here. So can you just say for me, I am M here and now? I am M here and now. Yeah. And, and so... So what I do, I use kinesiology. And so what I'm doing is, is registering her statements if they test true or false. And that comes up as a negative. So can you say I am M? I am M. No. I am M. Yeah, no. So what that means is there's somebody else's energy here that you're identifying or somebody else that you're identifying with, somebody else's that you're stuck with. You're not connected to yourself in the here and now. Does that make sense for you? Yep. Yeah. So we need to, so this is someone else. Um, so do you know who you might be identifying with? Um, no, but you know that I have got a few issues going on at the moment. Yes, um, hang on, let me see if I can, for the Facebook Live people, let me just see if I can plug my phone in without losing other things here. Yeah, okay, so it's important to know who you are identified with, yep. So is it your ex? Yeah. So does that feel true for you? Well, you know, obviously personally, but there's things that we can't talk about. Um, you know, yeah. that's the that's the struggle at the moment. But I don't identify yeah. with him. But that's obviously the the struggle. Yeah. Right. Do you think that you could be tapping into some of his energy right now? For the past like, few months, that, that has been a yeah. That's a and taking him on. Yeah. Mm in that kind of yeah absorbing that negativity yeah yeah okay and it feels like there's like heavy heartache somewhere yep. in there yep okay so let's just acknowledge something about acknowledging the heartache seems to be really helpful um so let me just see, I, um, I felt an energetic shift. I don't know if you felt that or if anybody else on the call felt it, but I felt an energetic shift. Can you say I'm M here and now again? I am M. Yeah. So I don't know if you felt something shift, but it feels like you came back to yourself a little bit more. Um, I, I can't lie. I didn't, I didn't feel that to be honest. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't um, lie. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but my muscle testing says that you are more identified with yourself right now. Um, I can and, acknowledge where it where it comes from. Yeah. I know where the negativity comes from and all that. Yeah. yeah. So it's something about acknowledging it, it seems to shift it a little. So let's just see if we can. So um, there's like energy here is what I'm sensing. Does that relate for you? Like sort of between your heart and your solar plexus. Yeah. So let's just see if we can make what, so imagine you're making an energy ball yeah. with that energy. So take an energy ball and then, and all of you can do this when you feel like energy coming into you, that's not yours. You can take an energy ball and imagine um, taking that energy you all and moving it out in front of you and away from you so that it doesn't have to affect you so heavily. Um, so the other thing that I, I get, um, and I'm not sure if it's from you or from other people on this call, but that there are like sp some spirits and entities present um, that are bringing some, some interesting energy to this call. So we need to know who they're connected to. We need to know anything more about them. We're just going to do some clearing. So these are also energies that can affect us, can lower our eye vibration, can make it hard to be us, can make it so we're absorbing lots of other people's stuff. So I'm just going to do a little clearing to help clear out some of that energy. And so what we do is we just say, truth, who are you? Truth, who are you before that? 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 Truth, who are you be in the future? And truth, what is your job? What was your job before that? 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 And what will your job be in the future? Eliminate, eradicate, destroy, and create. Revoke, recant, rescind, renounce, renounce, reclaim, destroy, and create. 
So we're just inviting whatever those heavy energies are that have been settling in here to lift and shift and move on. So if it's a, for example, if it's an entity or a disincarnated being, sometimes they get stuck. They don't know who they are. When we invite them to understand that they have a past and they have a future, then they can, they can leave. Um, so, um, I have so many tingles going down my spine right now. <laughs> okay. So that's moving some energy for you. That is awesome. Okay. So if there's anything else we need to do here. Nope. Um, so let's get, so you got some tingles. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but we moved a little bit of energy, helped clear up some stuff, right? So this is part of the work is really, if you're bogged down by other people's energy, if you're carrying other people's stuff to really clean house. Like I think of, I think of the work that I do with, with clients and like in my sessions is like doing deep house cleaning, helping you really clear out and get to the bottom, get to the root, get to back to you. And then from there, give you the tools to keep your house clean, right? We get it clean. We do the deep clean. There's maintenance to be had. And, and then you can do the maintenance going forward. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining and being willing to participate and shift some energy for everyone on this call. Um, and now let's, um, let's move back to what we were talking about and give all of you some tools that you can work with to be able to tell the difference between what is yours and what is not and how to sort it out and how to work with it. So let me just I, come to- Should I stop my video now, so What's that? Should I stop my video now? You're good. Um, I may call on you Is again, okay? but I'm good for now. So okay. uh, thank you. <laughs> so that's part of, part of the work, right? Is getting really clear on what is yours and what is not and, and shifting out into um, to coming back to you. So um, question, do you know what you being you truly feels like? So yes or no? Is that something that you're aware of that you understand that you can really get a sense of in your own self? Um, so some hints about what you being you really feels like. Um, I used to. Okay, so there's a, some confusion now about, about what that is and not knowing. I imagine sort of not knowing which way is up anymore. Um, that makes sense. Um, if you go out into nature, if you get away from all of the people of the world, how do you feel? If you have a greater sense of peace, a greater sense of ease, a greater sense of well being, likely that is you being you. That is you disconnecting from everyone else, right? That freedom, that sense of freedom, that is you disconnected from it, reconnected to yourself and disconnected um, to everyone else. And Stacy, I'm wondering if you're still on with us. Let me know if you're still on with us. Um, so part of um, part of the work of telling, excuse me, I have allergies and my eyes keep watering. Um, Part of the work of really telling the difference between what is you and what is not is getting to know what you being you truly feels like separated out from everybody else. And once I got that as a baseline and I started to know this is what me being me really feels like, it got so much easier to tell when something was not me. And before that, I'd spent so much of my life and so much of my energy really um, mixed up with everybody else, right, that I couldn't tell the difference. And I didn't even know what that was. But then once I started to sort it out, when other people's energy showed up, I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is not what me being me feels like. I'm being affected by someone. So that's one of the tasks that I invite you toward is to really start to identify and get in touch with what does you being you truly feel like. It's like when you forget about yourself, that is often you being you. When you have a sense of ease and peace and joy, that is you being you. Um, and so I'm going to give you a tool um, to help you start to sort this out. 
And one of the things to do is to ask, is this mine? Or who does this belong to? For every thought, feeling, emotion, sensation, physical symptom that shows up in your world. If it gets lighter, shifts or goes away in some way, then it did not belong to you in the first place. So I invite you to step into that. Like, is this mine or who does this belong to? And I'm gonna give you further instructions about how to work with that at the end of the call. But this simple question can really shift a lot. This is, you know, I was talking about, wow, a whole lot more than I thought is not actually mine. Um, part of it, part of the reason I've, I've identified that is using this tool um, in my life. Like literally, like I was starting to cry about something, be sad about something like, you know, I, and I had in, in this particular case, I had legitimate reasons to be upset. And, but then I like started crying and having these emotions. I'm like, wait a minute, is this even mine? And like, whoosh, like the set, the upset drastically diminished. I was like, okay, not mine either. That's not mine either. Um, and, and that shift just made such a huge difference. So that is a really powerful tool to use. Um, so there was a question about like when also getting mixed up, like, are you feeling somebody else's feelings toward you, somebody else's thoughts toward you, or are they actually originating from you? So another question to ask, is this, is this my thought or feeling, or is it the other person's feeling that I'm pick, picking up on? Um, and start to notice. Um, so one time I had this woman in my life and I was like, I felt like I was being really judgmental of her. And he said, what, like, what's my problem? Why am I being so judgmental? Why do I have all these judgments and criticisms of her? And then I said, oh, is this my judgment of her? Or is this her judgment of herself that I just happened to be sensing and picking up on? And as soon as I got that it was her judgment of herself that she was projecting out into the world, and that I was picking up on, it's like, I just had peace. I didn't feel like I had that judgment of her anymore. I was just able to let her be how she was. Um, and so that's another piece that you can really utilize and use to say, what's really going on here? So those are two pieces that will, oops, I just switched by, let me see how I do this. Okay. Oops, guys, I just messed something up. <laughs> Oh, technology. Um, oh, nope, wrong way, this way. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about some tools that we have. Um, so part of the reason that we get bogged down by everybody else's energy and everybody else's stuff is that we are a being contracted and we are being small. So imagine that, um, and when you make your energy expansive, then you don't get affected the same way. So what is this picture? So take a glass of water. If you put a drop of ink in the glass of water, what happens to the water? It would turn, right? It would turn the color of the ink. So, you know, but if you put that same drop of ink in the ocean, nothing will happen, right? It will, it will be virtually unnoticeable. So when somebody else's energy comes into your space and you're being only as big as a glass of water, rather than infinitely expansive, it's gonna color your whole energy field. It's gonna cover, cover sorry, color your whole being. Versus if you expand out as big as the ocean, it's not gonna really have an effect on you. So one of the tools that you can use when you're wondering if something is not your is yours or not, so take that feeling, notice it, notice how it's in your body, and then expand your energy out. So you can start by just filling yourself up with your own energy, expanding it out, 
a foot in every direction. Then you can do it three feet in every direction. And you can go ahead and do this with me now. You can do it six feet in every direction. You can do it as big as the room that you're in, as big as your house, as big as the town, as big as your city, country, state, whatever that is. And if you notice that as you expand out, whatever that energy that you were feeling, gets less intense, dissipates, doesn't have a hold on you, doesn't affect you, probably wasn't you, right? Like just as I did that, like whatever intensity I've been feeling from energy on this call, it's like it dissipated a little. It's like, okay, not mine. So if you're feeling like everything is too much, expand your energy out, make yourself as big as the universe, not as small as a glass of water, and it will get way way easier for you. Um, does that make sense? So that's another great tool that you can also use to help you and that will help you really identify, right? So if, if there's an intense energy, then it will, it will dissipate a little bit for you. And then let's go here. So the other thing that people talk a lot about in the world of not absorbing other people's energy and getting um, protect, we talk about protecting, defending yourself, right? Um, but here's the thing about um, shielding, protecting. What you have just done is you've made yourself small and you've made yourself vulnerable. If you go like, I got to defend myself against everything else. My experience is it's like putting up a big wall that everybody can stick their stuff to. Which is more powerful? You being like, oh my gosh, I have to protect and defend myself against everybody else's energy. Or are you going, you know what? That has no power over me. I get to just be and it's irrelevant to me. There's a line from The Course in Miracles, which this, this quote is from, which says, when I defend myself, I am attacked. Can you feel the energy of that defense of like, you have just made yourself vulnerable, able to be attacked, not safe, small, essentially. And then what if you drop all of that defending? What if you drop all that need to protect? What if you just recognize that you are that infinite being that doesn't need to defend anything and you just let it wash over you and, and through you because it can't harm you anyway. Um, it is in my defenselessness that my power lies, right? When you stop defending yourself, when you stop fighting, your fighting, when you stop believing that you're under threat, then nothing can really harm you. And Joyce says one of my favorite lessons in the course, right? And so, I invite you to, to take this on also as a practice. If you're defending against all of the energy of the world that is coming at you and you feel like you have to block out the world and it's just too much, like take a look at that. Take a look at what you're believing about yourself that you feel like you have to defend. And what if you just expand yourself out as big as the universe and let it all through, flow through you and not resist it anymore? I've definitely been in moments where I felt like somebody else's energy was coming at me really intensely and I'm trying to sort it out, push it out, whatever. I was like, okay, you can be here. It's fine. You know, okay, come on, bring it on. Just bring it on. And it's amazing what dissipates when you say, okay, just bring it on. I don't have to fight you anymore. Just be here. And I'm going to be greater and I'm going to not be affected by it. And you can be here. So um, I'm curious, as we've gone through all of this, like what are some of the things that are standing out for you? What are you taking away? What is really speaking to you about this journey of telling the difference and getting crystal clear on what is yours and what is not? 
Um, so we've talked a little bit about how to recognize it, some of the, the effects that it has on your life when you don't, and then giving you some tools to start to really sort out and, and work through and bring through to get to that place of clarity about what is yours and what is not. So I'm just curious, like, what are some of the things that are standing out or that you're taking away being here? One thing that I'm remembering is that that um, expanding my energy huge for me is recognizing it isn't yours, says Joy, right? And we're so habituated and trained to think that it's ours. If we're feeling it, it's ours. If we perceive it, it's ours. To distinguish between awareness and feeling is huge. And to recognize, this is a subtle distinction, but I'm starting to work with it, is, is it an energy that's coming from the outside in, into me, or is it an energy that originates from within me and comes out? And so much of the energy and the feeling that I, that I get is the energy coming at me from elsewhere, from coming outside of me. It's awareness. It is awareness. And when you learn to work with your awareness, you can have a totally different kind of experience because, and that's where your gift comes in, right? That's where your psychic ability comes in. You're like, oh, what am I aware of here? Like all of a sudden I just got a tightness in my chest. Like, um, is this person that I'm with, you know, going through heartache? What's really going on here? Let me ask some questions. And it's not actually really mine. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and let's just pop over here. Um, so home play, I wanted to give you some concrete tools to take away and to work with. The first one is to ask for the next three days, is this mine? For every thought, feeling, emotion, sensation, physical ailment, anything that shows up in your world, ask, is this mine? And if it gets lighter, shifts or goes away, then it wasn't yours in the first place. Um, and the reason to do this for three days is what we were talking about before is, do you know what being you, you being you truly feel, feels like? If you do this for three days, you'll start to really be able to tell the difference. Like if you just do it once in a while, you're not going to get that contrast. But if over three days, you're going to get this amazing contrast to be like, oh my gosh, I have the sense of lightness. I have a sense of what it feels like to be me because none of this is me. And this is what me be, being me feels like. And then start to pay attention to and know and get familiar with your telltale signs. What are the signs that there's an energy coming in that's not yours? What are the signs that you're being affected by somebody else's energy? How do you know? And then really start to pay attention to that for yourself, right? Get to know what that is. And then track, start to track when you're not yourself in the here and now, when you're mixed up with somebody else's energy. Can you tell when that is happening? Like what just happened? Oh, like I was feeling fine. Now I'm somewhere else. Let me come back. Sometimes you notice it. So the skill is to instantaneously notice when you've gone somewhere else, when you're not connected to yourself, when somebody else's energy has come in and bring yourself back. Sometimes before we're really skilled at it, we could just wake up to the fact that like, ah, oh, I've been not connected for a really long time. I don't know when I got lost. I'm going to bring myself back to me now. Or it could be like you walk in that grocery store and boom, something hits you like a ton of bricks and like, whoop, there you go. Start to pay attention to that. And then notice, I didn't put this in the home play, but notice when you get on that roller coaster ride. When an energy shows up and then you're off and running with your own stories and your own problems and then bring yourself back. Awareness is the first step, right? Knowing that something happened that you can do something about. When you're unconscious about all of it, you cannot do anything about it. And then the next piece um, is to use those tools that I taught. So expand yourself and your energy 
out whenever things feel like too much or you start to get overwhelmed, right? And then practice lowering your bear. Instead of putting up defenses, walls, trying to block everybody else, defend yourself from the hostile world, start pr practice lowering your barriers and letting the energy move through you instead of putting up resistance and walls. And, but do the first one first, because if you, if you lower your barriers and you're still being only that glass of water, it's gonna be like you're getting you know, plowed down by a semi. If you make yourself as big as the universe first, then you're not gonna be affected the same way. Are there any thoughts, reflection? Um, what would you, would it, oh, so Edna has a question here, which is what would you class as a telltale sign? So like for me, some of the telltale signs, like all of a sudden I'm feeling really heavy and I just wanna curl up in a ball in my bed. That's a telltale sign that some sort of energy has just come in and got me. Or all of a sudden I'm feeling emotional when I wasn't before. I get in the presence of a certain person and I have all these feelings come up, all of this anxiousness, all of these things when I was feeling fine before. Um, so those are some of my telltale, telltale signs. Um, you'll start to learn what yours are for you, uh, but really where you can notice like, okay, something just happened that took me out of being me and this is not me. Um, for me, like when I start to go, also when I start to go on those stories about all the, the horrible, like how my life is falling apart or I have social issues or nothing's working or I'm, I'm going broke, whatever those, to me, that's a telltale sign too. I've started to learn like, oh, I'm in that loop of like, my life is horrible. Probably some weird energy showed up. I'm not myself. If I get back to being myself, it will stop messing with me so much. Any other questions or thoughts? So I have this, also an invitation for you. If you would like to go deeper with this work, if you'd like to get really do the, some of that deep house cleaning, figure out what is really at the heart of the, the dynamics that have you pulling in everybody else's energy um, and not clear in your own self, let's get on a free breakthrough call, um, a free clarity call. And the purpose of this call is really to get to hone in on what are the key pieces that and factors that are contributing to your experience right now, maybe challenging you or keeping you stuck, whether it's, you know, absorbing everybody else's stuff when you go in the grocery store to the point you don't want to go shopping or other emotional upset feeling, you know, whatever that challenge is, let's get to the heart of what's really creating it for you. Let's sort out what it truly takes to change it. And then what is the best path to take you there? Like, what are the required steps? What are the skills that you need to learn? What are the supports that you need? And then put you on that path to creating that change. Sometimes that involves, we'll talk about working together more and doing deeper work together, or maybe it's just recommending some other particular tools or other resources, but it's helping you really hone in on for you, what's the thing that's gonna create the greatest amount of change in the least amount of time and allow you to create that shift for yourself. So if that's something you're interested in, I'm just gonna put the, the link also in the comments here and you can just go to my calendar. Um, oops, now I'm stopping, let me stop my share here because um, I'm trying to pull up my calendar for you. Um, just go to my calendar and see if you can find a time that works for you. Um, and I'd be happy to chat with you and see, you know, let's, let's identify what's gonna really make that, that real lasting difference for you. Um, Cause I know like if you, struggle with this stuff like it can be pretty when you get some deeper insights and tools for yourself and your well-being um i mean i've had i've had people i had a woman um her story is gonna ever forever be etched in my mind
But I had a woman who literally from call one to call two completely changed her life. She'd been depressed for 13 years. She'd felt like her life ended 13 years ago. And then the course of one, one call, she got her life back and got her joy back and got her enthusiasm for living back and then continued to make incredible changes in her life. So that's some of the power of really delving in and getting to the root of what is affecting you and changing it at its core. And when you do that, your whole life can change. And I've seen it. I've seen it over and over again, how when you really get to the, what the key issue is and you figure out how to transform and change it, then, um, you know, these things that you've struggled with your whole life that you felt you couldn't possibly change can change like that. Um, so that's my invitation to you. Love to talk with you, love to go deeper, love to hear your particular story and look into what will help you transform that for you. Get your joy, your lightness, your happiness. There's a reason my book is called Finding Your Own Happy. Um, if you haven't checked it all out already, go to findingyourunhappybook.com. Um, but, you know, let's put you on that path of, of true joy and of having being empathic be a real gift and contribution to your life. Um, I will stick around for another minute or two if you anybody wants to pop on and, and have a question or anything. Um, otherwise, we'll call it a night. Thank you for joining me. I will likely be a, back again next Tuesday for a, um, we'll probably do an energy clearing um, call next week. So just chakra balancing and energy clearing. I mix it up between facilitated work and sort of more content in classes. So thank you for coming and sticking with me through this call. I'm super grateful to have you here and to share this work with you. And as always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. You're part of my group, you're part of my community. I'm here to help you, serve you, support you in your true empath empowerment journey. Um, and, and yes, I would be happy to send that link to you um, as well. And yeah, if you wanna message me, if you have a private question that you don't wanna answer, Ask publicly. I like to chat with people also. So you're welcome to chat with me as well in Messenger. Um, and other than that, I have a beautiful night. Um, thank you, Em. So proud of you for sticking with us at this late hour through the whole call. And I um, look forward to connecting with any and all of you in the near future. So um, lots of love to you. And we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.